Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm an Ableton certified trainer and product specialist for Keith McMillan. And in this video, we're going to look at Arturia's pigments. First, let's set up. We have three steps to do. We'll make sure that we are transmitting MPE from the QNexus controller that Ableton Live is set up to receive, and then also from within pigments. So step one is really easy. In the shift menu, let's make sure we're using track one. We'll also tap MPE channel. This is where you set the output of what MIDI channel you're working with, but if you toggle it again, you should see it flash and it shows how many channels we're going to use for our MPE controller. Part two, Ableton Live. We'll make sure from within the preferences, I'll scroll down and find the QNexus controller, that the MPE is enabled. There's a checkbox there on the input. Let's load up pigments. You want to make sure that you're using a plugin that is MPE compatible. If you right click on the title bar of the plugin, you can see the MPE options there to enable it. So let's turn that on and let's set up our channel settings. You can think of your lower zone or your upper zone as the channel that deals with your global data, your pitch band, your foot pedals, if you have any connected. Uh, and those will be global channels that will transmit to all our voices. The 13 voices that we assigned that are on channel rotation, as you can see, start at two. So let's make sure to offset that and we'll use our last note channel as 14. Step three from within pigments, open up the settings and there's an enabling of MPE right here. So let's turn that on. We'll increase this to 13 channels uh, and we're good to go. So once you're all set up, I will point out that you can take a look and these indicators for the modulation section and pigments are very handy. We can see our slide, our tilt data show up as uh, macro one, M1 and aftertouch will represent our poly aftertouch there. So in M1, you can see the data show up there. I also want to point out that there is another setting that you might want to set to your liking. So if you want, for instance, relative unipolar, uh, you can play with the macro knob and that will play with the minimum position of your tilt. I'm going to dedicate my macro one to tilt for these patches, so I'll leave it on absolute. Let's modify a patch and I'll show some of the basics of setting up modulations. And we'll be focusing a lot on macro one, velocity, and aftertouch. It's great when you browse through patches, a lot of them already speak to M1. So there's always some great things happening. You can click on the top of any modulation source to see where it's outputted to. So in this case, I can see that this is set to the filter and effects number six modulation slot one. If I want a bit more. And also we can play with the positioning, the graphics telling us the range of modulation. It's a great visual indicator. It really helps us um, dial in where we want to start, where we want to end, and how much. I'll also point out, let's open up the filter. We can go negative if we want. It's great that you can leave a source there and exit out or leave it there and temporarily bypass it. One source can go to several different places. So let's just find something else that we might want to uh, pitch randomization of our granular. To assign a new one, instead of moving the knob, just reach the outside, drag up or down. It's also really handy to see multiple sources for one knob by finding the plus icon. So in this case, I can dial back the amount of pitch randomization. I like to call that the smoke monster. that can become a bit more playable. Let's try that in poly with a chord. All right, let's make one from scratch. You can find the templates in the preset pull down and there's several different starting places, which is awesome. I'll go to the default and that seems to have a wavetable on the first oscillator and uh, not a lot else going on or assigned at the moment. 
maybe we'll make something to match the MPE arpeggiator of our QNexus. So in this instance, I think, I think I want envelope on the filter. I, think I want the envelope on the filter, but also the macro one. So that will affect our slide. There we go. Find a place for the sustain to sit at. You might notice that you have full control. The two signals, they don't fight with each other, but we do have the ability of kind of grabbing that filter cutoff range right during the envelope portion, the, the decay portion, I should mention. I'm going to slow down the decay so you can really hear this. And my preference, something that I want to just explore, is mapping to the sustain instead. So in this case, the sustain being mapped uh, is where the filter is being situated in the sustain period. And you'll notice your modulation range increases as you get more range. Increase that a bit more. So that range there I think something like that's going to go great for the uh, arpeggiator. Let's take a look at uh, velocity uh, and maybe in the case of velocity some different decay lengths. Let's map aftertouch to FM. And I want to map something in reverse just because I can. So I'll go back to our slide and we'll put that to position, maybe on a negative value. There we go. Let's drop an octave it's out of that. Cool. Let's try this with the art. Let's make another patch. I'm going to go to the templates and pick default again. And I think this time I want to build something with the analog engine. I think I'll use the matrix 12 filter. And we'll give that an envelope again. So I'll probably come back and customize this envelope and click at the bottom to, to edit it. But I'll start with kind of a brass shape. I don't know, let's start with a pad actually. So envelope one being our amp env envelope. There we go. I'll set it up to do something like that. The macro one, I'm going to have it lift the filter again, just like last time we'll use the sustain. Just a little bit. But I think the magic might be here. If we have it increase the voices and the detune amount. Maybe it comes in with zero detune, and then we shoot for about half. And this is where this little feature comes in great, because now I can kind of fine tune how much of it I want. There we go. Maybe we'll go from mono to stereo as well. Our slide. Adding to that, it's great that we have control over our effects to do the same thing. So let's bring in some delay and reverb. them a bit as we slide up. And I can repurpose that really quickly. Maybe I'll save that. And we'll repurpose that into a base. Maybe we can take the effects down a little bit. We still have some modulations assigned. And we'll go to the keyboard mode, assign it to legato. I want to always glide. There we go. Drop an octave. Maybe even 
last thing I'll do is edit that envelope. For one more example, I have this patch I'm working on here. Uh, it's a bit of a pad. And I'll show you what I have slide uh, mapped to is the sample grain. You can see that I'm starting at the very end of the sample and allowing my tilt to. Bring in more of the beginning of the sample. And you can see the opposites happening on the volume to balance that off uh, a little bit. Over here on the aftertouch, we have some of the grain settings, just some randomization. Well, I hope that shows just a bit of what Pigments is capable of. Let's use some of these sounds and make a little demo that I'll use to play you up. See you on the next video.